Hi, and welcome, Milad Yusufi. Hi. It's uh, mm. wonderful to see you, and thank you so much for being a part of this unaccompanied project. Well, thank you for having me. I'm very excited and it's a privilege to be part of this wonderful project. Well, I think the privilege is ours to get to uh, enjoy your music. Thanks. Welcome. Um, do you want to say, uh, are there some thoughts you'd like to share about this piece? Um, before we dig into the nuts and bolts of um, what you wrote? Sure. So uh, this piece is a very uh, dear piece to me because I had the privilege to have an, enough time to work on it. And uh, uh, you may notice every section has its, a different section. For example, one section finished and the other started. That is because when I wrote one uh, particular section and uh, I was thinking about the next one and then the inspiration came and then I would suddenly run to it and then complete it. And then the third section and then the fourth section again. So it's a, uh, it was a privilege and I really enjoyed the process. And, and uh, I include also I'll include the sketches on the uh, uh, video of this concert, which I, I use also a lot of colors to relate it to my synesthesia. And uh, so I'm really looking forward to it. And it's, uh, it's a very emotional piece for me too, because I used also the, uh, the tone and the sound that I, I grew up hearing when I was a child and, and, and so forth. Excellent, excellent. Um, I, uh, I wanted to ask before we, before we dive in, um, many of the sections that you just referenced are uh, um, sort of based on different modalities. They have different things in common, but there's a couple of sections where the sort of scale that it's based on is, is pretty interesting. It's almost like a Western scale, but different. <laughs> um, I'm thinking particularly of the, the fast loud section, uh, rubato with energy at 126. Um, mm. and I'm wondering if, um, if you want to say anything, is there any um, nuance you can give me about what inspired that that scale? Is it is it something a scale that I just don't know? It is. Uh, it's like uh, in an Indian mode that I really like to use. It's kind of it gave us a sense of uh, ambiguity and kind of a very vague sense of what is what is next. So I think this particular section was inspired by one of the events that happened in Afghanistan and uh, and a lot happened since then. So I everyone was kind of shocked and uh, and uh, in a way what happened to Afghanistan and that particular section also portrays that anxiety and ambiguous future, the future that I was thinking about. And, and also the uh, uh, accidental are kind of different because I could have written it like all in flats or all in sharps, but some of them has flats, some of them sharps, which, which that's how they, uh, because we believe in Western music, sharp has a different character than the flats. For example, G sharp is different than A flat. It's the same thing in Indian mode. So that's what I had in mind. So A flat and sharp a little bit kind of leading down to all sharp and a little bit kind of lean back towards flat and it doesn't have to be exactly the same as we play in the western music so that's what i had in mind and uh, so that particular section was inspired by that what happened in afghanistan currently and uh, great um i yeah i uh thanks i i wondered uh the uh, <laughs> the way the notes are spelled with the sharps and the flats mixed is a little bit mind-bending for actually reading on the page when you mm -hmm. see a perfect fifth uh, but it's like one has a sharp and one has a flat and it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't, it doesn't read like that. But um, yeah, no, I, I, I'm glad to know that. I had a feeling that it had to do with the direction. I'm always interested in um, the way Western ears um, hear uh, like a mode or a scale or a rag. So differently sometimes than the way it's heard in India or, or other places like this one. Um, it has parts of it that sound almost like a blues scale, 
to my Western years because some of those relationships of the minor thirds uh, stacked kind of just kind of give it that feeling. But um, uh, well, after after we play it, I, I'd love to hear a little bit more about uh, how other ears might hear it. But should I shall I just dive in and play a little bit? Yes, please, please. Okay. Can't wait. All right, and. Um, I'll uh, plan on just playing it straight through. If there's anything that you want to stop me for, you can just wave your arms and yell and scream. Okay, sure, thanks. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Beautiful, really great, beautiful inspiration and really, uh, uh, interpretation. And really, I love the uh, way you kind of felt the uh, all this accidentals and the rhythm. It was so beautiful. Oh, thank Thanks. You. Thank you, thank you. Well, thank you for the, the pardon me, the gift of the, uh, <laughs> of your work. No, oh, thanks. Um, you have, um, I would love, I would love to hear all of your thoughts. First of all, it's a wonderful uh, interpretation. I really love everything. Uh, beautiful everything. I don't have very, very like a big, big, big uh, thoughts on everything. Just uh, on the, uh, just on section Adaju, uh, maybe, maybe, uh, Maybe a little slower. I like it to be a little slower than this one. On uh, the this one, yes. The uh, okay. uh, yes, that was my only thought I had. Um, everything else is really good, and uh, I really loved enjoying uh, everything. And also, maybe in uh, seventy four, maybe a little longer the notes. Uh, the uh, <laughs> Uh, that yeah that that's i have it, it like really truly on the string legato yeah like uh like turn it to but like but i think uh that what you did was really good that the way you did it, like connected to each other really great would it be better if uh i'm still changing bows on every note i could i could slur some or i could cap connect some in a different way <laughs> something like that does that uh, does that make it more more connected or or keep keep it separated i think separated will be great but it's still like a longer bone everything like a kind of t -d 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 -d, like that but that what you did first was really good that's i really i really like that very much i'll keep it very like a toe um okay thank you uh feel free to continue your notes and then uh, in uh, yeah in uh, in section 126 rubato with energy that particular you can take your time you could for example it's like a, a improvisatory like you could uh, you're totally free to play with the, with the uh, tempo also for example there are certain sections you can stay longer and and then trying to come faster to certain notes, that's totally up to your interpretation. Okay. Um, something like, let me just experiment for a second. Tell me if it's the right yeah. direction. <laughs> something like that just yeah exactly okay. slowing and playing with this yeah exactly okay um the tempo you have indicated 126 is really fast for for this kind of gesture so um i was i did a lot of work to try to make sure i could i could try to try to get there 
Oh, uh, still, that's why I was thinking like, yeah, I want this to be faster, but how, what can I do to make it more expressive? So that's why I would go borrow with energy with, uh, okay. I could have I could have written something more like improvisatory or up to the performer interpretation like that. You wrote rubato with energy. Uh, so I think that's probably perfectly clear. Or you could maybe you could say improvisatory, but um, mm. I I just let myself get a little preoccupied with the energy part and not so much with the rubato. Part. That's totally beautiful. I, I really believe that it's whatever you feel at the moment and and uh, for example there are certain parts you feel to play slower faster it's totally up to you even not i mean uh, overall in the piece as well because there are certain sections you'd like to kind of do a little robot also and uh, but there's no robot for example in, in uh, measure number 142 when the allegro 126 starts mm -hmm. you can also take your time there okay so it's like overall it's up to your interpretation what whatever you feel and you think like okay this section should be a little more uh, i think more alive or more fast i, I should say in this note but you know it's totally you're totally free it, it doesn't have to be exactly the tip for example here level 26 it certain uh, parts you feel to be slower you're totally free and welcome to be slower and, and you are faster if you like and take your time okay that, that sounds good. Um, anything else you want to uh, mention before I, I ask a few more questions? I think, yes, please go ahead. I'm, I totally said, I think whatever I thought, I mean, totally feel free to ask me because. Um, um, just from a technical point perspective, we had emailed a little bit about, you indicate many, um, Guisandos between notes, slides between the notes, and you had said to um, to make them long and essentially fill up the duration of the note with them. Um, I I have been sort of settling on uh, sort of establishing the note a little bit and then sliding, um, even at the beginning. Instead of. wonder if you do you did you like that or do you prefer I never on the notes that are indicated with a slide that I never let it sit even for a moment just keep it always traveling no I think what you did was really good and, and great like I like when you established it when you established it and, and good because it's it sounds more like a uh, like an eastern style of music which I really like and it makes sense because it kind of we know what notes we are going to which notes so that that's totally perfect yeah okay. yeah some people prefer like to do it uh like at the beginning of it but i think it makes sense especially on longer notes uh -huh. when you establish it and make it uh, so it's kind of understandable for the audience here and i really love it okay oh great um and i'm curious if you would say a little bit about the end. Uh, the end um, is so that with these arpeggios is so um, it sounds to my ears just so Western all of a sudden. Is this so, something about your your journey? And then the last chord is a surprise. <laughs> yes. um, so we, we set up a, the expectations for a different chord that seem very um, square and regular and then we get the chord, it just happens to sort of be not quite the right chord um, for, our, for our Western conservatory training. Um, mm. I wondered if you could just tell me a little bit specifically about the last section. Sure, it's a very, it's a very good question, actually. Uh, you noticed something very uh, important in the piece, which, so I, I came up with the chords, which I, I, first I came up with the colors, so I always, work from the color. So these were the RPs were the chords first that I came up with. And I really I liked the idea of, of having it like an arpeggios for the cello. And uh, it also it portrayed the struggle we go through, which is totally unexpected. For example, the first arpeggios is totally different the first measure than the second one, 150 and 151 something totally surprised and then so on and so forth. 
but at the end there's a sign of hope like a light i think most of the composers use that i think especially bach also did that so there's like a piece of minor suddenly it opens up in major he thought of it as sign of uh, enlightenment i believe so and uh, and i also wanted to have like sense of hope at the end so whatever happens really anxious and really uh uncertain and suddenly we have a hope and it ends with a sense of like hope at the end and uh and light and like a brightness at the end that's what i had in mind but yeah certain uh i'm sure certain parts of this arpeggios might sound like a western because it's kind of certainly either like a, a diminished seven or half diminished or uh, minor but then suddenly changes to a different mode and finally we end up in something like we, we make the audience ready for whatever is whatever whatever comes next or the next piece <laughs> So they could have kind of wash the brain and then going back to the next one. <laughs> oh, I love that. Uh, and that th thank you. That's helpful for me to. Um, I was uh, making my way towards towards trying to feel it as that sort of beam of light that comes out the hope that um, uh, gives us something to go on for the future after the darkness of some of the other the other sections. Oh yeah, thanks. I'm glad you liked. And also, I wanted to include uh, uh, with ambiguity in, in that particular 142. But then I thought, okay, maybe I will because that will make it kind of probably hard for the performer to interpret with ambiguity. What does it mean? So I said, okay, I, I might I might probably tell the performer to just think of what happened to Afghanistan recently and try to interpret that particular section. And then uh, it could also end. With a little bit of Richard Dando, if you'd like, at the end, to okay. kind of say like, okay, finally we have we have arrived. That's also totally up to your interpretation. That sounds good. Great. And do do you mind? Um, do, would you mind sharing some thoughts on the state of Afghanistan right now? What what you're hopeful about and what what you're not. Yeah, actually, it has been kind of unbelievable for all of us what happened recently. And uh, I think probably thousands of people just left the country. And uh, and I think all the intellectuals and artists and everyone else, whom I have known at, at least, they all flew to Europe for, applied for asylum or some of them came to Europe. And, and it's like kind of, music is not allowed anymore again like 25 years ago when i was born it was the same thing yeah. so it's like it feels like a circle again it's like and uh, and i don't know what how people can live with that music. there are still some of my friends i know they still play music kind of really uh down and low when they're with themselves secretly which which they're they're, they're proficient but but we, we, it's, always, it's always like when it, it happens when we're shocked, like it happened, like everyone's shocked, like what happened 20 years of at least 23 years of nothing. Yes, everything went down. So we are just uh, hoping for the best and praying we can do anything and hope everything is going back to normal at the end. I mean, especially in the last few years have not been uh, easy years for everyone. The COVID hits and then suddenly this one. So, but but we have hope and, and as artists, for us who live in the United States or with another part of the world, we try our best to kind of keep the culture and music alive. So the reason I'm writing the symphonies and operas is I'm creating a body of work for our guests and next generation so that they can use them uh, in, in the future. At least so I'm working also on a folk music of publishing 12 volumes of folk music that we have survived from the war 50 years ago so that we could have at least our music saved. That's what I can do as a, as a, as a musician. And all, I'm sure uh, some other artists and, and people, musicians who are from Afghanistan probably might think something the same, I assume. But, but we try to at least keep it as if we have a treasure or something, a trust we have to carry it like a, it's like the movie we had to carry like the dinosaur egg we have to put it somewhere really safe so that it could uh survive that same thing i think about the culture and music we had trying to 
um, keep it alive through art and music, as, as at least as my part. And we hope for the best. Yeah. Um, well, uh, for anyone who might watch this later who doesn't know our story, uh, you and I connected in Afghanistan 10 years ago um, when I was just visiting. Um, I was a visiting artist with the uh, Winter Festival of the Afghanistan National Institute of Music, and you were a talented student there. Um, right. And it's it's wonderful to connect here in the States. Um, but uh, I, I have to say, I would love to, uh, um, I would love to see music flourishing there again. And I hope that someday we can set up the world premiere of, of Anchorage in Kabul. And um, we can, we can bring your music back, back home. Uh, hopefully and thanks for this thoughtful idea and uh, yeah thanks for being a great part of this so you are and other people are like all the musicians that are part of this keeping Afghanistan music alive that's a part of the journey so I I can't do it as a composer myself I only can, what I do is like I am right to have a kind of written down which we didn't have it before that's what I think my responsibility but as performers like you and other major orchestras that are interested in uh, and premiering the works and they are make, making it come to life. So thanks for being a great part of it. And yeah, we're lucky that we we live, we both live in the East Coast. So it's a great to connect sometimes and, and, and to, to be able to share music. And it's really wonderful. Um, well, um, I, I agree. I, I'm also, do you, do you mind just saying a few things about how, um, this project is very much about um, everyone's every every contributor's Americanness, and mm. I think you your story is particularly interesting. Um, where this is your home, but this is not your home, and um, you, I mean, your home is just so. So the circumstances are so. Um, so different from some of the other composers. Uh, I'm. Uh, do you have thoughts on some things that you have taken from America and introduced in integrated into your artistry, into your music, into your creativity, um, and also, you know, what what of your composing. Um, you know, you spoke very much about the preservation and the keeping Afghanistan alive. And I'm wondering, uh, I guess basically what I'm wondering at is, is how um, the American experience has helped you grow um, as an Afghan and also probably in a split screen kind of way as an American and what that's done to your music. It's a very deep question and uh, thanks for asking. It's uh, for the first few years I was thinking like, you know, as if you're living in a hotel room and you're going home tomorrow. That's that's what I had the feeling every day. But uh, but during my six years of college, actually, I've been lucky to live with the host families during uh, mostly Jewish host families, which we had shared food and culture and music and everything. And uh, that helped me kind of cope with whatever I lost back home. So they gave me a family kind of uh, feeling and vibe and uh, and that helped me kind of cope with what's happening but yeah as, as like uh, as i'm not i mean i haven't got my citizenship yet but if i get hopefully soon it's like we never lose that kind of feeling of home people people still call us like afghan american or whatever they call like african american or asian american or different for our people but for us it's like for for me who grew up back there in afghanistan it's just like I'll always be Afghan till the end of my life, but it's still that kind of title that they put to, to, to make you fit in a certain particular uh, class or that, that that's just a, that's just a title, but I was still, when I still dream, truly I still dream of home. So I see myself in the how that I grew up and, and, and uh, others. So it will stay for us, with us forever, I, I believe. But, but yeah, but the, 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 
positive point is that there are a lot of opportunities here that we could probably grow more if we just stay back home. So we had to let go of something in order to gain something. So, um, so at at first it was really hard, but then when when I was kind of uh, uh, welcomed to the musical community after one year of my staying here, then many doors opened, and then my hope became alive again that I could I could continue, I could do whatever I dreamed of, like to make a body of work for Afghanistan's music, and. Uh, and uh, so that's what uh, my dream is. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that I could use this opportunity and for the next generation. But as far as home concerned, it's always one home for me, which is back home, my country. It's, it's also second home. Uh, I'm not saying it's not, but, but still, like, probably it might take me a time unless I have my own family at some point. Then I might probably feel separated, a little bit kind of focused on whatever to hear and put my focus on because i still believe that i'm an afghanistan when i talk to some people i say okay um okay i will come from from here and say what do you mean by here i say oh, i mean sorry i mean here in america not i still think i'm in Kabul. <laughs> so when you talk about Kabul, these things happen like, and, until my brain accepts that the body that okay you're in a different space now so i can still i'm still working on it but still i hope it happens one day Yeah, I think I think that um, what you share is common um, uh, in some measure for for many immigrants and immigrant families. Um, uh, but I can only imagine how intense it is um, to have your home so changed and um, and to be cut off from the place in that in that way. Um, yeah. So my father came here by, you know, when he came here by choice, he was ready to leave and he was ready to, to make a life in a new place. Um, and, and as you say, you came expecting it was like a hotel room and this was a temporary, temporary traveling and not, um, not, uh, at the start of permanence. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I also think, uh, as you were talking, I was just thinking about how, how interesting it is that that you know we you have the richness of the Afghan tradition is so deep, of the Afghan musical tradition, and yet, as you say, it, with the exceptions of a few people that are quietly playing for themselves in in country, um, everyone else is carrying on musical. The the musical tradition is living in exile. It's living, you know, uh, uh, the whole. Afghanistan National Institute of Music community is living in Portugal, and and that's where the center of Afghan music is, um, which I'm sure it's a lovely place there, but it's um, removed from you know the mountains and the, mm -hmm. the the actual dirt and air and everything from home. It's it's hard, and we we can only hope, try to do our best to change things there. Yeah, I can only hope and pray and hopefully one day everything's going to be back and uh, we can go and then try to breathe the air of Afghanistan as a dream. Yeah. Um, well, Milad, uh, thank you so much for the piece. We are um, really looking forward to the premiere on October 22nd at the Pow Center in Chinatown in Boston. And... Um, and are there any last thoughts you want to share or shall we sign off? I think it was really very emotional and really wonderful to hear you play. I hope to hear you alive at the premiere and then come. And uh, I'm looking forward to the premiere. And thank you so much for bringing this piece to live and, and can't wait. Well, it's a, it's a privilege. So thank, thank you. you. Likewise, it's a privilege to collaborate and to kind of refresh the memories we had back in Afghanistan 10 years ago. We had, we call it a golden time there where we, everything flourished for like a short time. And then, so it always brings back that wonderful memories of uh, Afghanistan. And thank you so much for being part okay. of it. And thank you and your community for bringing me there during that time. It was um, really special. That's crazy. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. We'll see you soon.